Hey everyone, we have to talk about Mount St. Helens, a very dangerous volcano. Mount St. Helens is located in the state of Washington in the United States and it's basically located between Seattle and Portland, Oregon, but closer to Portland and not far away, a little bit east of I-5. I-5 is the highway that basically goes along the west coast and connects the west coast up to Canada. So increased seismic activity at Mount St. Helens. So is the magma chamber recharging for the next event? Let's talk about this in this video guys. Mount St. Helens is one of the most famous volcanoes. Rudy agrees with me in the United States. So he hears the coyotes outside. <laughs> That's why. Um, the most famous volcanoes in the United States, not in a good way, unfortunately, and it's also one of the most dangerous, as it has demonstrated in 1980, when it lost a third of its height in a major explosive eruption that has caused, unfortunately, great harm and destruction. The last eruption of this volcano occurred in 2008, it was not that much reported about, but lava, a lava dome did grow in the crater. And that was followed by periods of increased seismicity as they're always happening at this volcano. There were periods of increased seismicity from 1988 till 1992, from 1995 to 1996, 97 to 99. And what the scientists are saying, these seismic events are probably triggered by magma on the move but they did not end up in eruptions. Were they intrusions? The ones who watch my channel on a regular base, there are quite a few intrusions in Iceland. It happens like periodically. This month, an intrusion where magma is on the move and grinds tunnels through the surface, makes its way to another location, but remains stuck underground, doesn't find a way to the surface or does not have enough pressure yet to find a way to the surface. So that's an intrusion versus an eruption if magma finds a way to the surface and then lava flows out. It's called lava when it's out and when it's still underneath its magma. So that sounds scary, right? Magma on the move underneath Mount St. Helens. And we have to understand Mount St. Helens has a shallower magma chamber that is fed by a deeper lying magma reservoir. So basically same system like they have in Iceland underneath the Swartzengi power plant and the Blue Lagoon, that shallow magma chamber keeps refilling. And when it's full, point of maximum capacity, it triggers an eruption. Same thing with Mount St. Helens. Every volcano takes its time or takes longer to fill that up or to build enough pressure. So not every volcano is the same. The USGS, that's the US Volcanic Observatory, Geologic and Volcanic Observatory, um, has reported that since February 1st, 2024, there have been approximately 350 earthquakes that they have located at Mount St. Helens. That was measured by the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. So they have their monitoring stations in place to monitor Mount St. Helens because um, it is close to settlements, I have to say. It's not only Portland and Seattle. There's Tacoma, there's Olympia, and there's Longview. There's, there's other areas there where especially ashes and stuff. So it's not that this thing is in the middle of nowhere if it erupts, especially should it erupt bigger. So over 95% of these earthquakes that they have measured since February have been less than magnitude one, so in the micro seismic range. But that doesn't mean that this is not significant because when magma's on the move with volcanoes, it usually doesn't produce like seven, eight, nine earthquakes. It keeps grinding and it keeps moving slowly. So that's why there's micro seismic activity. And if it's getting closer to an eruption, these can increase in size. 
Good thing was most of these earthquakes were too small to be felt on the surface, but the number of earthquakes that happened per week has reached a peak early this month in June with 38 earthquakes per week. And then they were getting bigger. So the largest earthquake had a magnitude of 2.0 that has occurred on May 31st. So just a few days ago, basically two and a half weeks ago. These earthquakes are occurring at a median depth of about 3.5 miles, that's 5.7 kilometers roughly, below the sea level. But if you look at the whole volcano, that is approximately 4.6 miles or 7.4 kilometers below the floor of that Mount St. Helens crater. So they're calling these seismic events, these short-term increases in the number of earthquakes, background seismicity. And they say this is normal, this is common, happening often at Mount St. Helens. It's just increasing right now. So the last two periods of elevated seismicity happened in 2023 and in 2024, and they represent the largest short-term increase in earthquake rates since the last eruption has ended in 2008. So it is something, I don't want to say concerning yet, yeah, a little bit concerning, yeah. I don't know, Mount St. Helens always gives me shivers down my spine. I don't know, I'm, this, this one is a scary one for me. The difference to the earthquakes that are happening right now compared to the ones in the 80s and in the 90s is that back in the days we have seen longer duration sequences of these earthquakes but also still none of these sequences that happened in the 1980s or 1990s did end up with an eruption thankfully so where do these earthquakes come from Usually these small magnitude earthquakes that are located right beneath Mount St. Helens at depths that are well below sea level are generally thought to be associated with pressurization of the magma transport system. So that is the deeper magma reservoir that has a transport system up in the more shallow magma chamber. So one cause for this pressurization is the arrival of additional magma, a process that they call a recharge. And they think that this is happening now. And now the big question mark whoop, bloop, is, when does this shallow magma chamber reach its point of maximum elasticity? I'm using this comparison with like a, a hair tool here, a rubber band, so I can stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, but then it reaches the point where I can't stretch it any further. And then if I put more pressure on it, it would blast. So the same is here with this magma chamber. So when is it full? because then it could trigger an intrusion or an eruption. So it doesn't sound really great to hear that Mount St. Helens is recharging. So where is that deeper lying magma reservoir that is recharging or feeding Mount St. Helens? So that forms near the base of the crust at depth of about 16 miles. That's 25 kilometers, so quite deep. And the magma from there slowly rises through the lower crust and then accumulates in a reservoir that is only 2.5 to 6 miles deep, so 4 to 6 kilometers. So from there, the way up and out is not that far anymore. So recharge events can occur when magma enters this upper reservoir. And then it increases the stress and that's leading to earthquakes. You have to think about miners that want to build a tunnel. So the magma wants to build a tunnel. It wants to 
get up. So it needs to grind through rocks. So that's why it's creating these seismic events because it's digging a tunnel. So recharge events and high rates of seismicity have been observed in the past at Mount St. Helens and of course at other volcanoes as well. And this can continue depending on the volcano for many years without an eruption. We're just monitoring the super volcano in Italy, Campi Flegri. Check out my videos about this. This guy keeps rumbling and producing earthquake swarm after earthquake swarm right now with a distance of about a week and a half and then there's the next one we just had a 3.4 it had the biggest one in 40 years 4.4 just on may 20th so if this guy this guy is like yellowstone category if this thing has a super volcanic eruption so usually before an eruption, we would see a ground deformation. So the, the land would be rising underneath that magma chamber because if there's more volume underground and if this is inflating, it lifts up the ground. And then the cap rock that's underneath basically keeps the lid on. Also, what could be noticed is volcanic gases, increased volcanic gases or thermal emissions. So we see the fumaroles at Campi Flegre, for example, these hot gas vents. But here at Mount St. Helens, the experts are saying we have this increased seismic activity, but not any significant changes in other monitoring parameters as of right now. That's why they say there's no change in the hazard level of Mount St. Helens as a result of this seismic activity, but this doesn't mean that this means nothing, right? I wanna show you this graph here that the USGS um, has released, and it shows you the increase in seismic activity because this is basically up until yesterday. So from February 1st to June 17th, there you can see the seismic events per week, and it peaks in June with these 38 events per week. And then they have released another graph that shows a little bit more of the long-term activity. So this graph also shows that it has increased activity as of now. So it shows the earthquakes that have been located at Mount St. Helens in a time frame from 2008 to 2024 to just yesterday. And this is called a non-eruptive period because the last eruption ended in 2008. So they're saying this activity is consistent with normal background levels. And then you see this other graph here on the bottom of this um, picture. It shows the earthquake's depth below sea level in kilometers. And if there are like orange filled circles, they denote the seismicity from February to June 2024. So you see this basically on the right of this graph. So if the circles are larger, they represent a higher magnitude. So the larger the circle, the higher the magnitude of the earthquakes. And then this is an interesting graph as well. It shows, you, you see basically um, the crater there, and then you see the earthquakes that are happening underneath this crater. And what they can see is if you compare it to what has been happening in 1987 to 2004, and then they compare it to the seismic swarm from February to June. So you see here, a map of Mount St. Helens with a grayscale, and it represents a digital elevation model of this crater. The earthquakes that they did interpret as a recharge event between 1987 and 2004 are basically plotted here as a heat map of earthquake density. That's what you see there. So areas with more earthquakes are in blue, there you see the, the, the deeper areas, while areas with fewer earthquakes are shown in oranges and brown. So the deeper the blue, the more earthquakes in this area. And then there are the earthquakes with the current episode from February to just yesterday. They are shown as orange filled circles, so the dots. 
right? The older ones are the whole areas and then there's the dots and you can see they basically overlap with what has happened in the past. And also here, the larger circles represent larger magnitudes, smaller, smaller magnitudes. And then on the bottom, you can see that's a cross, a cross section of the volcano looking to the north. So the topographic outline is shown as the black line at the top of this graphic. And then on the right, you see another graphic. That's the cross section of the volcano looking west. So there you also see these earthquakes, they all overlap. It's the same area, it's recharging, so they're pretty sure that that is what it is. So this guy needs to be monitored. And, uh, you know, this guy is closer to me than other ones. So um, it makes me a little nervous, I have to say, because it's not, you know, even if you're not affected from lava flow, but the ashes that go into the atmosphere, um, it's not fun. So definitely, guys, I hope you're interested in that one as well. I know I have a lot of viewers from the US. Hi there. Good morning. Um, so guys, yeah, let me know. What are you thinking? Are you living close to this volcano? Are you worried? Do you prepare for an eruption? How do you prepare for an eruption? Do you have bag out bags? So let me know. Let's chat as always. Check the videos in the end screen. I have just released another update about the big guy Campi Flegri and of course something's going on in Iceland as well now they're they're trying to divert the lava with water so this seems to be their last resort to save the power plant and the blue lagoon should the lava try to really get over their defense walls there in in a, in a greater scale than it does now so guys interesting stuff is happening subscribe to my channel so that we see each other every day and uh yeah can can look at what's going on with these volcanoes and earthquakes and other stuff on a regular base and please like this video to give it a little kick in the butt to push it out through the algorithm and guys Thank you so much for your support with the supers here on YouTube and with the coffees on my Buy Me A Coffee site. So if you want to support my channel, me, and through that, my animals, because that's what I do with this channel, my farm. I support my farm. Um, buy Me A Coffee, buymeacoffee.com slash silky. Link is in the description of this video. Um, Rudy is sitting next to me. Unfortunately, you can't see him. <laughs> so this is going to be an outtake. If I take Rudy now you will hear Eddie but I think Rudy wants to say hello and we say bye bye